which flag is there? Augustan age, which age? No, no. You said that it was a revision of classical writers. So, for this, it is called that is wit and prose. Okay, wit and prose is called that. It is called pseudo classical. Okay, it is called neo classical. Right? ये इस एज के नाम है नियो क्लासिकल इसलिए बिकॉज दे वर राइटिंग फॉलोइंग द क्लासिकल बट इन न्यूअर टाइम दे यूज टू से दैट दे आर क्लासिकल राइटिंग क्लासिकल राइटर्स एंड दे फॉलो द एंशियंट बट दैट वॉज अड थिंग दे आर नॉट डूइंग इट दे वर डूइंग इट इन देयर ओन वे प्रोज एंड विट एंड प्रोज राइटिंग बिकॉज देर आर एसेज विच वर विटी विच वर सिटेरिकल and uh, the major issues of the societies are being taken seriously uh, through the satires and sarcasm which was taken in the essays and prose writings yes this was the age where prose came up as a major uh, like genre of the writing people were writing uh, poetry just for uh, taking the satires in it and it is the mock satire mock heroic or satirical or critical but the prose proses are sarcasm proses are taking the social problem on a serious note reflecting it to the people they will are targeting the social political issues of the society so this is prose and write wit and prose because prose were written and a wit that is intelligent human intelligence you know used in this stage at the maximum level this is the trend theek hai ye reasons hai q is age ke ye naam hai अब अगर हम इस एज को बोलते हैं कि क्यों इसको ऑगस्टन एज कहा जाता है ऑब्वियसली सो so, uh, इसके पीछे एक ही रीजन है दैट इट इज कॉल्ड ऑगस्टन बिकॉज द राइटर्स और यू कैन से पोइट्स ऑफ दिस एज इन्फ्लुएंस्ड बाय द क्लासिकल राइटर्स लाइक ओविट वर्जिल एंड क्विंटिलियन ठीक है कौन थे ये राइटर्स देवर रोमन एगस्टन पोइट्स ये सब रोमन एगस्टन पोइट्स थे इसके अलावा दीज राइटर्स वर ऑल्सो इंफ्लुएंस बाय हॉरेस यू कैन से बिकॉज ही इज अटीक हॉरेस क्वेंटिलियन तो ये यहाँ पे इन चार राइटर्स से मेजरली इंफ्लुएंस थे जो कि रोमन ऑगस्टन राइटर्स थे एंड क्वीन एंड वॉज ऑल्सो गिविंग अ प्रिजर्वेंस टू द लिटरेचर एज किंग ऑगस्टस ऑफ रोम दैट्स वाई दिस एज इज कॉल्ड एज अभी जो स्टोरीज पोइट्री में डिपेक्ट हो रही थी दे आर मोर ऑन फोकसिंग फोकस्ड पोइट्री थी बिल्कुल थी जनरल पुराना था लाइक बिकॉज मैक्सिम ऑफ द पोइट्रीज बाय रिटर्न इन आई एम बी सेंटम ओके दे आर ऑल टेलिंग सम और अदर इंसिडेंट बेसिकली इस एज में अगर हम पोइट्री देखते हैं तो हमें एलेक्सेंडर पोप के अलावा कोई राइटर नहीं देखता बट एलेक्सेंडर पोप बींग ओनली फेमस राइटर ऑफ दिस एज हिज ओनली फेमस पोइट्रीज आर बताओ रेप ऑफ द लॉक Essay on man, essay on criticism, dance art—they all are critical poetry. So they are more of prose. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. That I have. So I have told you realism because they were depicting the real stories of the society in their work somewhere and somehow like uh, a polished way. Because if we, when I uh, talk about Jonathan said, then you will understand what is realism. Satirical, you understand. And another is what you said. elegance elegance is like they were predict, uh, sorry they were portraying it elegantly they were not using any kind of um, like harsh or uh, abusive words hmm. artificiality was encrypted in the works of like um, this uh, richard steel and uh, uh, alexandra pope because they were talking about the hypocrisy they have targeted the hypocrisy of the aristocrat and realism Uh, is like because Jonathan Swift was talking about the world and the core reality of everything, like how politics is bad, how religion is good, how uh, the other part of the people are living. What is colonialism? He criticized that also in the uh, Hornanum's uh, part of uh, the Gulliver Travels. 
He talked about the intelligence of the Eastern world in uh, Lagado and Laputa part. That is her journey. So he he is giving a reality. He talked about uh, the barbarism of uh, Ireland in uh, Modest Proposal. That is all realism. He has talked about unpolished, unfiltered thing he has portrayed in his work. Yeah. Or or kya pada batao, Shabash. Anything else? Okay. Ah uh, then. Uh, let's talk about first. I was talking about that uh, these people uh, were writing, and uh, the complete writings were divided into three genres. Mainly, ये किस में काम कर रहे हैं? Dramas जो हैं, that is tradition. तीन ही होते हैं genre वैसे भी. Poetry. Poetry किस तरीके की थी यहाँ पे? Poetry was how the poetry was satirical and prosy. how it is because uh, they were depicting the uh, like uh, harsh and uh, hypocritic hypo, uh, sorry hypocrisy and uh, the darker side of the society that's why second idea came as drama so drama in this age was restoration comedy restoration comedy that means shallow and failures third थर्ड कौन सा पार्ट आ जाता है यहाँ पे प्रोज सो प्रोज वॉज डिवाइडेड इन टू टू पार्ट फर्स्ट वॉज फिक्शन फिक्शन किस तरीके का था यहाँ पे रियलिज्म बिकॉज वट एवर द फिक्शन इज बींग रिटर्न इन दिस एज वॉज ऑल अबाउट रियलिज्म दे वर टॉकिंग अबाउट द लाइफ ऑफ ह्यूम लाइफ इफ आई टॉक अबाउट जोसफ एन जोस इफ आई टॉक अबाउट टॉम जोन्स इफ आई टॉक अबाउट क्लेरिसा और वट वॉज द वर्क ऑफ रिचर्ड सर फामेला If I talk about Robinson Crusoe, if I talk about uh, um, that uh, Daniel Defoe's work, uh, mm, all were like reality. All were about the travelogues. All were about the uh, sea voyages and everything that is realism. They all were talking about realism. Building Roman, Kundal Roman. There is again the growth of human being in the society. So it is fiction was realistic. There was no other thing. But yes, sometimes men with satires, uh, they were depicting things and histories in them. That's it. Because कहीं कहीं पे कुछ चीजों को यहाँ पे लिया गया पुरानी चीजें जो लिखी गई थी उससे. Then again, second thing is uh, is non-fiction. So non-fiction के अंदर यहाँ पे क्या लिखा गया? Non-fiction के अंदर it was all satire. और क्या है इसके अंदर uh, elegance? Yes. because they were talking about the aristo case they maintained the dignity and uh, the chasm there was not dark humor but uh, it was about the personal attack it is about uh, uh, like the double meaning things were also there so antithesis okay these are uh, about non fiction so what, what the non fiction was doing non fiction mein lo direct social issues ko raise kar rahe the you can say it's social theek hai it's socialistic so ye jo non fictional hai ye sare ke sare society ya uh, oriented hai ye hai characteristics aapke rest uh, sorry augustan age ki sari writings clear clear not getting any answer okay now let's uh, come for the augustan age essay writing first क्योंकि सबसे पहले वहीं से स्टार्ट होता है तो यहाँ पे आपका फर्स्ट uh, राइटिंग्स जो आ जाती हैं जो राइटर्स यहाँ पे आ जाते हैं यस तुषार यस बिकॉज दे आर स्पॉइलिंग द इमेजेस ऑफ द मेजर कैरेक्टर दे वर अटैकिंग द वेरी फेमस पीपल इन द सोसाइटी देर आर स्पेक्टेटर क्लब Like जोसफ एडिसन फेमस एज अ Essay writer, but along with the essays, he wrote two dramas also, Cato and the Drama. Cato is a tragedy which is written on a realistic person of 14th century Italy, and he has written the 
murder of Cato in that, that is a tragedy. And second is the drummer, that is a restoration comedy, a failure drama. But yes, in his uh, another writing section, that is prose, uh, uh, non-fictional prose, uh, he has written around uh, uh, like uh, 700 uh, approximately essays, 500 something in uh, Spectator and 200 uh, approximately in uh, Tatler. So in Tatler, Tatler was a magazine which got published in 1709 to 1711 and uh, in Tatler, the another contributor was Yes, we used to take him another contributor, but he is the main who started this magazine, The Tatler, in 1709 and has given a pseudo name to each of the writers of that magazine. And that name is Isaac. Yes, Isaac Bricker is the name of each and every uh, writer of this magazine. He don't want to reveal their name, so he didn't give it. And along with these writers, the another writers here are Jonathan Swift, Alexander Poe, John Gate. No, Samuel, Samuel Johnson has its own magazine. He was not a part of uh, this time. He born in 1708. And 1709, the magazine has started. How can he be a writer? Right? So, uh, <coughs> uh, he has started his own magazine. Now, uh, Alexander Pope, John Gay, these are the uh, five major writers of uh, Tatler magazine. They all were writing under the one pseudonym that is Isaac Bickerstaff. Another magazine which has, he has started was uh, uh, The Spectator. And uh, Spectator was started in 11 and was added in uh, 9, uh, 30, 1713. That was again started by Richard Steen and in that spectator he has given the another pseudo name that is Mr. Spectator for each and every writer of this magazine and the club's name was Spectator Club. Now all the writers has to write under this pseudo name because he don't want to reveal the identity of anyone so that whatever they are writing. Uh, he, as an editor and the owner, was ready to take the responsibility of that without revealing the name of the writer. So, but uh, uh, the title went smoothly and it was uh, publishing in the three days of a week, that is TDS, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And uh, uh, that is Spectator. Spectator, he tried to publish as a daily magazine, uh, which was uh, publishing a lot, many essays even more, more uh, twice, twice more than uh, Tetler it has published. And um, uh, in the spectator, there was um, a group of characters which uh, uh, Joseph Edison and Steen has designed and all the essays were asked to uh, write under these uh, characters only, using these characters only. So the six major characters of the spectator club uh, you need to write down, you need to identify the names of these characters because you can get a question in the NAT examination that uh, what are the exact uh, combination of the right uh, spectator club characters. That is uh, Mr. Uh, sorry, Bill Honeycomb, the Black Man, uh, and the, uh, the Widow. There is a lady character, a Widow is uh, there and uh, the merchant is there, that is, uh, there, there are a lot many names I'm forgetting. Uh, Andrew Freeport is a merchant, uh, one is a clergyman, uh, Roger de Coverley uh, is a clergyman, one is a, uh, your uh, courtier, uh, so there are such kind of people when you will uh, see the note, or who is study material you have, Captain Sentry is a uh, businessman. So th there are uh, these, uh, this is a sailor and businessman. Now, you need to write down all the characters and uh, you have to understand who are the major characters. If Mr. Spectator is there, but he is a seventh character, he is not the part of that. The lady character is also here and other than that, the other five characters are the uh, characters who belong to all the fields of the society. Basically, through these six, six characters, he has uh, the uh, spectator club. These six characters of the spectator club, they 
have compiled the whole society as one is a clergyman, a religious person, one is a courtier, an aristocrat, one is a uh, merchant, one is a business person, one is a uh, like uh, uh, another uh, philosopher. So such kind of educators and all they have been compiled. You have to understand uh, these characters and their characteristics because maximum जितने uh, भी essays यहाँ लिखे गए हैं spectator club में they all are are like a spectator is sitting somewhere and watching the society their gossip he is listening and he has written about it thoroughly theek hai unko isi tarike se likha gaya hai ki aaj wo kahin baitha hua hai aur kuch usne dekha aur usme as it is usko story form mein likh diya that is not fiction okay i remember uh, mujhe ek uh, iski spectator club ki ek story dhyan hai jiske andar they have talked about a boy who wanted to study but he was not handful of money so he used to uh, uh, sit outside the library and uh, used to see people going and uh, uh, going in and out there so he used to visit to that library the public library and uh, uh, started reading and uh, started reading and understanding for that uh, sorry content there and later uh, he was an educated person privately educated person and became a writer and the same story we can see on a part of uh, samuel johnson dr samuel johnson was a person who was unable to go to university his father was a book finder he used to sit at the shop and have read all the stories all the um, content of shakespeare and other writers uh, who were writing in his age or before his age and he understood the writers thoroughly because his father was a book binder so he used to keep the book and he used to read them uh, in a quick manner he was a quick reader because he has to give it back in a certain time like do se teen din usse return karne hoti thi so he was having that time and later on when he also started doing something he started earning a bit of money he uh, started going to a public library to gain his knowledge so they were the people who were writing about it i'm not saying that uh, he is the same person because uh, uh, joseph edison died in uh, 1790 and i think by that time um, this uh, samuel johnson was 10 11 years old and spectator uh, was uh, stopped publishing in 1730 so it was not, it cannot be a story of uh, samuel johnson but it's like he has talked about such kind of children who wanted to uh, read and write who wanted to take education but there was no such provision of government to provide the basic pre education to the children okay they have raised this issue so such kind of stories are there got it now uh, besides uh, these two writers the list of another, another writers are jonathan swift uh, john gay john gay was also a dramatist he was not a famous writer uh, why his name is there because he was a person uh, belong to his spectator club and um, now we have to focus on alexander pope and jonathan swift uh, what are the writings of jonathan swift jonathan swift is a writer who was a cousin of john dryden jonathan swift he was an irish writer cousin of john dryden and john dryden has criticized him that cousin uh, dear cousin you cannot be a poet unka ye statement tha jonathan swift ko when he started his initial stage of writing when he started as uh, initial poem he said no 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 you don't have the caliber of being a writer you cannot be famous or poetic and be a laborer ये उनका आ, कुछ कमेंट था आ, जिसको इग्नोर करके इन्होंने बाद में अपनी पब्लिकेशंस ली ही ही और यू कैन से बिकेम अ पार्ट ऑफ स्क्रिप्टर्स क्लब एंड दिस टैटलर एंड स्पेक्टेटर क्लब ही बिकेम अ फेमस राइटर एंड हिज राइटिंग्स आर मोर गुड एंड मोर रिकॉग्नाइज्ड देन इवन राइडन सो नाउ लिस्ट हिज वर्क विच हैज टू बी रेड बाई अस और दिस एग्जाम पर्पज हमें कौन कौन सा पढ़ना है हमें इसमें पढ़ना है फर्स्ट इज द बैटल ऑफ द बुक्स द बैटल ऑफ द बुक्स इज अ पब्लिकेशन ऑफ सेवनटीन जीरो नाइन सॉरी सेवनटीन जीरो फोर एंड इन दिस बुक ही है क्लासिकल राइटर्स एंड कॉन्टेम्प्ररी राइटर्स 
so why he has written this book this book was basically written by him on the request of his mentor uh, on the request of his patron william temple he was his patron so he requested him to write a book which can give a comparison between uh, contemporary writers and the classical writer but the temple want him to write in a way that he can prove that contemporary writers are better than uh, the uh, classical writers but he couldn't as for him a uh, contemporary writers means john dryden too and uh, there is other restorations writer too and he didn't like their writing so he said he no uh, classical writers are better so he gave a discussion in which no one can make a conclusion as such but somehow and somewhere he has shown that classical writers are greater and they will remain great in compared to the contemporary writers in all the ways uh, they will be better so yahan pe inhone kaise kis tarike ka comparison diya tha classical writers were compared with a honey bee like they are the one who used to take uh, honey or you can say the substances from all the uh, all kinds of uh, things they they are going to each and every use the material to convert it into a honey which is a medicinal thing which is a, a good for health which never is exploit anything which never did something wrong and the contemporary writers were compared with spiders who used to pop their webs by the uh, poison of their own body to take a prey so it's like he, uh, these writers were writing something just to uh, make money just to they were targeting people they are making a direct and personal satire to gain uh, like uh, money to gain attention of the people they are uh, taking the life they are taking the respect they are taking the honor of someone just for the sake of taking oh uh, sorry earning money second work is tale of tub that is again 1704 it is a religious satire in which he has satired on all the three sections of uh, christianity that is uh, protestants uh, calvinist and uh, that catholics so catholics were presented by the peter elder son of the fisherman uh who resembles saint peter uh that uh, protestantism was uh, symbolized by martin that is martin luther who was a leader of protestants and third was was jack that was J, J, uh, sorry john calvin uh, and uh, was a representative of calvinism which later became puritan so he has satirizes all that no one is giving a real and original form of knowledge Uh, which can lead a human being near to god but they all have altered their knowledge for the sake of their own fame and they are not representing or are reading the real uh, philosophies of the god but they have just taken their own part so that they can be benefited they are not thinking about the society all the two works are clear gulliver's travel 1719 this is written in four parts first is lilliput second is uh, Bantigam, third is Laputa and Lagado, that is Japanese island, and fourth is a uh, Yahoo, that is uh, Mahonims. So in the first part, he reached to an island which is full of uh, tiny people, which is uh, full of uh, dwarfs, and they were the politically very sound and cunning people. They used uh, even Gulliver to fight a battle for him in exchange of his freedom. and secondly when he reached to brabantigam they are very noble person religious uh, humble and they used to treat him as a guest and was because uh, they were uh, 72 feet longer people so they were taking care of him as a tiny uh, and dwarf uh, person who could have died out of their fist so they were taking care of him like extra care of him then he reached to lagado and uh, uh laputa the japanese island which was full of science art mathematics they are far more intelligent to the uh, far more intelligent than the other world they were doing every kind of jobs even prostituting themselves they uh, were more into the art and craft and they were able to make such kind of color which he has never seen they were making such kind of art which he has never seen they were so so uh, uh, like uh, um uh, advanced in the sciences they have the flying islands and the flying machines with them 
and uh, they were uh, the people who were uh, very proficient in mathematics so it was like indian and japanese islands he has uh, surveyed and after that he reached to some african islands where uh, people uh, were in the tribal form they were their original form and uh, they were half human half uh, um, animal and um, they were very innocent they were they welcomed him they were trying to help him but one person was there only and he said that he, whosoever uh, in a man form has came to this land they used to captivate us they have the tendency of colonization and uh, they were taking their innocence to uh, them and was leaving them as civilized and corrupt like them so uh, that man uh, doesn't want uh, gulliver to enter the island but somehow the other uh, yahoos uh, helped him but they requested him not to give the address to uh, of their land to anyone so that was the promise he has given to them in exchange of his freedom or you can say uh, his uh, the hospitality he has uh, taken there and uh, uh, this is how he has rounded the whole world so ye char books hain jiske andar he has criticized politicians then he wrote good things and bad things about the religious people then he uh, was a bit critical about the eastern people who were civilized who were advanced who were far more intelligent than the western one but along with that they were the people of less morals and then he talked about the africans who were not at all civilized and were having a threat of being colonized so uh, he gave a whole sum picture of the world and has given the criticism for the british and other europeans who were into the race of uh, colonization was taking the innocence and the culture the uh, roots of people on the name of colonization तो इसने यहाँ पे काफी बड़े चीज को उठा के यहाँ बात की है एंड उसको बहुत अच्छे से पोर्ट्रे भी किया है एंड अनदर वर्क ऑफ हेम इज दॉडेस्ट प्रपोजल विच यू नीड टू रीड एंड दैट इज अ वर्क इन विच हीश गवर्नमेंट फॉर बींग लाइक इन ह्यूमन बींग इग्नोरेंट टू वर्ड द चिल्ड्रेन Uh, in the streets of ireland uh, the government was unable to give facilities uh, to the poor people uh, the aristocrats are making fun the aristocrats are wasting food luxury uh, facilities but uh, the poor men are not even being provided the basic necessities of life so uh, he in his modest proposal is uh, giving a proposal to the government and the aristocrats of the society that you should take the uh, at dinner in front of these poor people and the poor people should serve their kids to the dinner people to this these royals because these royals are heartless obviously isliye unko serve kar do and because you are also mindless you don't know how much facilities you can give to your children that many children you need to uh, produce but you are producing children like hell and you don't have any a uh, source of income to give them education even food so and these people are wasting food throwing food but are not have the humanity uh, to give it to their servants only to feed so so that they can feed their family so usne dono pe hi sataya kiya hai poor people pe ki itna dimag to hona chahiye jitni capacity hai utne bacche paida karo unhi ko achhi education do और जो रॉयल्स है उनके पास इतना होते हुए भी वो यहाँ पे इनकी सैलरी नहीं बढ़ाते इनको एक्सप्लॉइट करते हैं तो इसमें मॉडर्स प्रपोजल में उसने ये सारी चीज कही है उसके अलावा इसके एसेज हैं एंड वट एल्स ही हैज रिटर्न ही हैज यूज मैनी अदर सीडो नेम्स ऑल्सो एंड लास्ट इज ग्रेटियर्स लेटर इन विच ही हैज डिस्कस हिज पर्सनल लाइफ एंड फीलिंग हिज लव एंड अदर थिंग्स टू एनी ऑफ द फ्रेंड but the name is not been given and he also has used the pseudo name mr drapier okay so the pseudo name of the yeah, pan name of jonathan swift star uh, gulliver isaac bickerstaff drapier these are the three major pseudo names he has used okay any question about him now alexander pope alexander pope ka uh, 
के ईयर है और इसमें इन्होंने he belonged to a very good family and used to live in the windsor forest which is a royal society in england and uh, he uh, was a very good writer though uh, but uh, was a dwar and a humpback person who has uh, who was suffering from um, this uh, pneumonia in his bones so uh, he used to have pain some time and was uh, um, uh, like prescribed to take opium sometime for the uh, reduction of the pain so he used to take very balanced diet and everything but uh, as uh, he was physically not very attractive and was not so sound so he has that kind of frustration which we can see in his writings also somewhere somehow now his works if i uh, talk about his works then first is winter's forest 1711 then uh, homer's iliad 1712 then uh, rape of the lock essay on criticism dunciad aur koi work hai peripathos and another work is masiha that was an early poetry so these are the basic poetry masiha he has written in english which was later translated by jonathan swift in latin Windsor Forest is a poem he has written uh, in the memory of his uh, places which he was uh, like uh, born and brought up at, and then he has to leave it for London. Then uh, Homer's Iliad, that is the work he has, yeah, uh, Homer's Iliad that he has read and has rewritten uh, because he was a big fan of uh, Homer. Rape of the Lock, we all know that is dealing with the story of. Uh, Arabella and Lord Byron, uh, who were uh, there uh, on a edge of getting engaged, but Arabella because it, she denied to be with that person. So uh, Lord Byron has taken a revenge with the help of her maid, and he has taken that incident and has written it into a mockery. But along with the particular incident, he has targeted the ministers, the uh, royal people, the aristocrats, the magistrates of the Uh, in contemporary England, he talks about the uh, uh, contemporary youth. He criticizes them for being so insensitive, and uh, uh, like you can say, they were too modern to uh, be a part of society because they were uh, you uh, like in a daily life. They were going to clubs and this and. Uh, Uh, all the uh, all the ways the uh, royal ladies used to keep uh, uh, the dogs, and that is a symbol of their royalty and richness. And they used to love the dogs as much as they uh, love their husbands. They don't have. They used to show their um, love for the pets more even. So he has uh, given such a uh, picture of the society and. Uh, Oh, sorry, of for this 18th century, that which was very modern, uh, which is uh, club oriented, which is uh, less emotional. Uh, I I won't say more practical, but uh, uh, hypocrite and shallow. And um, in this society, people are more about mockery and uh, uh, hypocrisy, right? Uh, they are more into show of things. if uh, a girl denied to get uh, married to a boy denied to accept the relationship then the boy alone came out to take the revenge publicly to insult her uh, how she can insult her by denying marry marriage to him so that is a dishonor of the whole family and now he is the one who is taking revenge for that that's why uh, the name rape is being used here critically so uh, this is uh but we used to read up with the name of belinda and he employed the rosicution myth here which is a kind of elements or you can say a machinery uh, which has been employed in this poetry to ma make it elevated and that's why this poetry is called as a uh, strom in a tika because that was a very minor issue of a family of two families but he has presented it as a uh, like a 
main issue of the society a pseudo honor uh, idea such kind of revengeful and disgusting so um, uh, this is your rape of the law and about prosecution myth prosecution myth is a machinery in which uh, uh, the writer has involved this uh, you can say self and self eyes uh, angels uh, aerial um, and other uh, supernatural elements to show the beauty and uh, uh, artificiality of the society so this is called prosecution myth you you need to read about it okay now next is uh, essay on criticism essay on criticism i will deal with the criticism essay on man you need to leave no need to go with it danshiad is in four parts and where he has dealt with the different different uh, poets and uh, their his own uh, personal experiences with them then epistles to dr arbuth not dr arbuth not is one of his friends and a writer too somewhere but he was a non fictional writer so he has written uh, letters to dr arbuth not criticizing many people who with whom he has worked with then peripathos peripathos is a a uh, latin word which means the uh, art of sinking into the poetry he has used uh, uh, this term and uh, the ideas uh, which he has taken from the roman poet hero uh, sorry horace and he has uh, uh, compiled all the idea of horace horace into uh, peripathos he has used uh, his idea of creating poetry and feeling it thoroughly take it into a uh, human mind that is very with us masiha is about jesus christ he that is a short poetry he has written about him so this is your uh, poets of uh, augustan age is it all clear uh, good so any questions from alexander pope any questions yes john kerel is one of the uh, good friend of alexander pope who bring this particular issue in front of alexander pope and narrated the whole story he wanted uh, alexander pope to use his satirical skills and to write about this uh, uh, trivial issue uh, so that the society can aware about it and can not dare to play with the honor of a girl uh, just for such a issue that she has denied for a marriage because it's not like he uh, women does not have a right to deny for marriage or not to take the decision of it but that was also not for the uh, girl uh, arabella was famous for her beauty now uh, this is the basic thing and john carroll was a good friend of alexander and you can say a family friend of uh, arabella arabella former hmm. yeah rape is a uh, like a big word to use here but because uh, without the wish of the girl they have planned executed it publicly to insult her they cut their hairs so that is called raping of it because the company plan is there uh, they took the support they uh, found her alone where no one was there and then he did it to give him a public insult so that is called raping yes another question this is an allegory he has written uh, allegory written on an uh, sorry allegory on the unfortunate lady that he has written uh, for the sake of a lady who was not dead though it was a title it has a title allergy it was not a dead song but a uh, lady who has rejected his marriage proposal he proposed a lady uh, who was a poet also and he proposed her to get married but because he was just of a height of 4 ten the lady was longer than her uh, longer than him and uh, he also had a very unstable mindset he was uh, like famous for his uh, psychological issues and uh, he was uh, uh, besides being dark he was very really lean that's why um, he was not so attractive lady like and another thing is he was humpbacked so obviously a uh, physical deformity was also there the lady denied to get married to him and that's why after his her denial when she uh, was marrying someone else he wrote a uh, allegory for a living lady uh, he also had insulted but in this uh, uh allergy he has not taken her name properly he is not uh, he has not basically insulted her in a bad way but has just said that okay now that particular uh, person is out of his life whatever so okay pastor hello 8 second ha huh? hold hello 
वॉइस आ रही है 